It was a super Tuesday for New York billionaire Donald Trump and former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Each candidate won handily on the biggest single day of voting in the nomination process for the next American president. I believe what we need in America today is more love and kindness. I, look, I'm a unifier. I know people are going to find that a little bit hard to believe, but believe me, I am a unifier. Hello, I'm Nathan King in Fernando and I do, and this is The Heat. Voters in a dozen U.S. states cast ballots for Republican and Democratic presidential nominees. Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Hillary Clinton both won the most number of states and racked up even more delegates, solidifying their positions as the front runners. CCTV's Jessica Stone begins our coverage from the White House. Jessica, you've been all over this race. It seems like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are campaigning now even harder because they know that they've nearly secured their nominations. Is anyone else in the race? <laughs> They're certainly not acting like it, are they? I mean, just as soon as they had racked up all of those delegates in all of those states uh, after their Super Tuesday wins, they basically turned all of their rhetoric on each other. And in many ways, they have exactly some of the opposite taglines. For example, we've heard Trump say he wants to make America great again. Now we're hearing Hillary Clinton say, I want to make America whole again. So even on that score, they're reversed. But, you know, uh, the momentum is going to keep building for Trump because now we've got Ben Carson dropping out of the race as of uh, this Super Tuesday election. We don't know where his uh, delegates or where his endorsements will go yet, but his spokesperson in so uh, announcing it said, listen, there's only one person left in the race, and that person is Donald Trump. In spite of that, though, CNN has just reached, uh, released a poll on Wednesday that indicates in a head-to-head -head matchup between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump still gets beat in a general election. Very interesting. Just the Republican Party, however, hasn't decided yet, and it's not totally unified behind Donald Trump, is it? We've got a former Republican presidential candidate, Mitt Romney, who lost to Barack Obama, making an announcement on the race this Thursday. A lot of division. Is he going to try and stop Trump along with a sizable portion of the rest of his party? He's certainly in keeping with that, and that's what we expect to hear from him uh, tomorrow. But he's also been really been approached to run again, even after uh, been, being unsuccessful twice in the past. Um, we don't expect to hear him announce a run on Thursday, but we do expect him to weigh in on the state of the race. And, and you know, the Republican establishment is coming up with all kinds of ways to stop Trump. They really only have the next 13 days before the next primary to do so. And um, there's just no sign that the Republican senators, uh, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, are going to drop out. Uh, or uh, Ohio Governor John Kasich. Uh, that continues to divide the votes and divide the delegates and could bring this up to the convention, which is what the establishment would like to do. Uh, but it seems unlikely that it's going to be able to, they're going to be able to stop Trump even then. Because just remember how many additional voters he's bringing in uh, just by virtue of looking at Super Tuesday. For example, in Massachusetts, the Boston Herald reporting that 20,000 people left the Democratic Party to vote in the independent, uh, to vote as independents or Republicans, uh, and that could very well be the Trump effect. I did get a chance to speak to one Trump supporter on Super Tuesday. Here's what he had to say about why he likes him as a candidate. Oh, Trump, I'm all in, 100 percent. So, not going to be perfect, but uh, got to do it. So, <laughs> what do you like about him? I like the fact that he was a businessman. He knows how to run companies. He knows how to run a company very um, strategically and financially, fiscally speaking, which trends well for the country. So, Nathan, from here we have, like I said, 13 days to the next major set of primaries. We're going to be watching Florida, which Senator Marco Rubio hails from. It's a winner take all state. Uh, he needs to win there to prove that he should even still be in this race. John Kasich, the governor of Ohio, uh, running uh, there, and that's a big state that's going to go on March 15th. So, we're watching both of those handily to see whether or not these candidates continue to divide the voters or, uh, in fact, uh, they solidify behind Donald Trump. That's where it's headed.
we could see a contested convention in July. Wow, that would be amazing for us journalists, but not necessarily for the party. OK, well, joining us now in our studio is Lynn Sweet. She's the Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief for the Chicago Sun-Times from Cleveland. We're joined by Zachary Williams. He's an Associate Professor of African American History at the University of Akron in the U.S. state of Ohio. Also with us here in the D.C. studio is Alberto Avendano. He is the executive editor of El Tempo Latino, the Hispanic publication of the Washington Post. Great to have you all on. Then I'm going to start with you because you've been out on the trail quite a lot. Uh, a lot of journalists have had to eat their hats on Donald Trump um, of late. They didn't think he would get this far. He's won seven states now on Super Tuesday. Is he the nominee? Close to it. Um, it is going to be hard to derail him. We'll know more after the bunch of states up in the March 15th primary and caucus votes. But right now, uh, the f political phenomenon known as Donald Trump seems to be very difficult to derail at this point, though uh, there are people who are trying to do it. And there's some big money from this GOP establishment wing that includes Mitt Romney, who you've been talking about, that are going to be running more ads to see if they could change the trajectory of nomination that that Donald Trump is on right now. Just a quick point, uh, almost throughout this whole process, no one has really attacked him on his record with paid advertising in a sustained way. That did happen in Iowa. He didn't win Iowa. Yeah, that's very interesting. Alberto, you know, uh, he's broken every rule, it seems to mm -hmm. be, Donald Trump. He's gone after... Uh, uh, Hispanics. He's gone after women. Mm -hmm. uh, he said a lot of uh, inappropriate things that would kill any other candidate. What's going on here? As, as, as a foreigner, we, we look in and think, what's going on with this race? Everything works for him. Uh, Super Tuesday was Super Trump. Uh, he needs Clinton kryptonite. That's a joke, but in reality what is going on right now is that you have a character that is beyond politics. And he is providing new voters for the uh, Republican Party, talking about energizing the bases and all, the, all those things that we generalists like to talk about and analyze and all that. Then you see a Super Tuesday where the voters of the Democratic Party go down, the voters of the Republican Party go up. Virginia, he gets 100% uh, uh, higher turn, uh, turn, uh, turnout. Um, so uh, here we have uh, a gentleman who is the in, in, insulting voice in chief, um, who really finished his, uh, his conversation uh, last night with journalists in his uh, uh, little kingdom of, of Palm Beach, saying <laughs> that, well, listen, uh, I am providing these voters, I am getting the, the delegates, uh, I have to lead the party. Uh, Dr. Zachary Williams, I want to bring you in here because, okay, this is a primary race. They're usually a bit more dirty. You uh, appeal to your base. But what about Trump, the nominee? Could he win a general election? That's been uh, a major concern, Nathan, for uh, a while. I know particularly for the establishment because um, they've been concerned about winning but not sure that Donald Trump would alienate uh, uh, voters who might be more moderate or middle of the road. But I think a lot of people uh, took uh, Donald Trump... Uh, uh, took him for granted and didn't necessarily take him seriously. Uh, they treat him as a celebrity. And so as he began to appeal to a base, although I would say a sort of mean-spiritedness uh, of a base in a section of the country, uh, he's garnered a lot of support. And now he's become very serious. And as former President Clinton mentioned, uh, we should take him very seriously. Uh, he's a very serious candidate. Uh, so now you see the Republican establishment scrambling uh, to try to figure out ways to derail him. But so far in the game, is, is if it seems as if that's not possible. And even Marco Rubio, at sort of third place, uh, hasn't really reached the 20% uh, platform yet. Uh -huh. So he uh, necessarily can't even receive any delegates. So it seems as if Donald Trump uh, is, is going to uh, move uh, forward full speed. But he's a part of a larger tradition. I think uh, sort of a fusion of a George Wallace-type politics, uh, along with uh, uh, Strom Thurmond and even other figures, uh, in terms of trying to find an I identity for a Republican Party that's in disarray right now. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going back 50 or 60 years. Quite incredible. I want to get back to Trump and the Republican race, but of course there was another race, slightly more civil, Lynn, <laughs> uh, that we're talking about the Democratic uh, Party. Hillary, Hillary Clinton did just as well as Donald Trump in terms of number of states. Uh, Bernie Sanders picked up a few, but not enough. Is she more the presumptive nominee now for the Democratic side? Well, I don't want to go to presumptive yet. She's in good shape. And by the way, uh, for our international viewers, you don't become the nominee because you win a lot of states. Each state 
has delegates. Can I interrupt you there? Because we actually yes. want to bring up a, 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 a slate of the delegates. Okay. Uh, just to run through, you do run, uh, you win delegates so for the convention. Know. Yeah, so yes. let's, let's have a look at this. It? Donald Trump has 319. You need 1,237 to win in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Ted Cruz has 226, and Marco Rubio has 110. On the, on the Democratic side, you need 2,383 to win. Hillary Clinton has 100, uh, 1,034. That includes superdelegates, which I don't want to get into now. Uh, Bernie Sanders has uh, 408. So pick it up from there. So here's the thing, and thanks for explaining it, because it must look like we're pretty crazy in how we do business here. <laughs> but this is what we do. This is why we, when they talk about the United States, this is an example of how each state gets and each party in the states call the rules. So anyway, right now, Hillary Clinton is ahead, but Bernie Sanders, who has a phenomenal amount of money, he's raising so he money has, faster. No, he yeah. is, and there's two big deals that are happening in this election, and that is Donald Trump is basically writing his own checks, so he doesn't have to deal with any pressure from fundraisers or spend time doing them, and Bernie Sanders isn't paying for this campaign himself, but he's getting a lot of small donations, so he's even ahead of Hillary Clinton. So that gives you the freedom to kind of do what you want. Mathematically, uh, it seems that Hillary Clinton is so far ahead in the accumulation of delegates, she can come close to clinching March 15, though you know, technically it will take her more. That's why Sanders can go on until she gets that number. He has no incentive to quit right now. Yeah, but she's, it, it almost reminds me of eight years ago in reverse when she stayed in the race a long time, even though necessarily she didn't have the map. I just want to go to Zachary here uh, um, because African-American votes in Alabama really stuck out last night. 93% went to Clinton, 5% to Sanders. Uh, Latino voters in Texas uh, mm -hmm. also overwhelmingly uh, went to uh, Clinton. Zachary, does, does, does Sanders have a problem here that he's only appealing to one demographic and that's white people in the north of the country? That's been a, a major issue with uh, the Sanders campaign thus far. He has leadership who does have sort of ear to the African American community, but ultimate allegiance thus far has been demonstrated uh, uh, behind uh, uh, former Secretary of State Clinton. Uh, and so it's pretty strong throughout the South, the solid South, but the African-American component has really buoyed her candidacy. Uh, and really, she's re rode the crest and the wave um, of that uh, uh, sort of vote to, um, through Super Tuesday and even to, uh, an mm -hmm. even closer uh, level to the nomination. So I think uh, a lot of the issues that Senator Sanders is speaking to, uh, uh, particularly income inequality and the like, uh, are important to African Americans, but they have a sense of credibility and have a sense of history with uh, the Clinton campaign and former President Clinton and even uh, Secretary uh, of State Clinton's uh, history with the Children's Defense Fund and fighting for racial uh, equality and racial justice uh, and, and even, you know, other work as well uh, as uh, First Lady. So I think there's a big barrier uh, that the, can the Sanders, uh, Sanders campaign has had to try to uh, overcome and I think it's so far in the game now it's very tough to try to uh, to do that. So, oh. um, so I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens from here. Alberto, uh, you know, is there a schism within the Democratic Party between a white North Bernie Sanders and a, and a darker, more uh, a mixed race uh, South and West? Let's, let's put it this way. Um, the pol there is a political brand called the Clintons. And that, political, and no. that political brand is very well installed with the Hispanic electorate. Mm. Hispanics are going to go with the Clinton brand, definitely. I know that uh, Mr. Trump uh, continues saying that uh, Hispanics love him. Um, well, Everyone loves Trump. Yes, but Hispanics especially, according to him. And uh, it was interesting to see how he said also, and it was overstated, that he won the Latino vote in Nevada. Well, hello, uh, it was just 6,000 Republican voters, and <clears throat> he got uh, about 2,000 some of those voters. There were 16,000 Democratic voters who went uh, for, for Hillary Clinton. So um, we have to understand two things. We are in the primaries. In the primaries, there is a specific kind of voter. We are living uh, an economic crisis in the United States, uh, a shrinking middle class, racial anxieties, mm. demographic shift. And all these things are, are factors for a certain kind of electorate, especially in the Republican Party, especially in the, in the uh, Donald Trump base. When we go to 
the whole nation with a real presidential campaign, we are going to be in a different environment. You cannot make it to the White House without those niche, and excuse for my uh, marketing concept, those niche voters, Hispanics, African Americans, etc., where uh, Donald Trump is not doing well. Uh, Len, you wanted to come in here? Well, I could kind of, let me amplify what you're saying. There's a lot of angry people out there, Democrat and Republicans. That's why these candidacies of Sanders and Trump are taking on in the United States. Mm. Everyone kind of gets it, but the Democratic politics, party politics, are very much organized uh, to deal and take in and to uh, have constituencies. And among the base vote, labor unions, African Americans, Hispanics, mm. Uh, single women in particularly. And so this is a coalition that's been very important to the Democratic Party. So when Donald Trump talks about deporting a whole host of his people, immigrants, mainly Hispanics, when he talks about uh, barring some Muslims from coming to the United States, this goes to not, this reinforces a vote of angry people and solidifies what's going on in the Democratic Party. One quick thing, whatever the differences are between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton are minimal right. compared to the differences between the Republicans. And we'll get more on this. This is a fascinating discussion, but we actually have to take a break. More on our conversation about the U.S. presidential race right off this. Stay with us, of course, you're watching The Heat. Welcome back to the heat. We're discussing Super Tuesday and the resounding victories for U.S. Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton and U.S. Republican candidate billionaire Donald Trump. Let's get back to our panel. Um, Zachary, before I go to you, I want to play you something because there's a lot of divisions being opened up by this primary process. Now, I want to um, play uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, being asked if he'd disavow the racist group, the Ku Klux Klan. Can we hear that? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know, did, did he endorse me or what's going on? Because, you know, I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. And so you're asking me a question that I'm supposed to be talking about people that I know nothing about. But the, I guess the question from the, from the Anti-Defamation League is, even if you don't know about their endorsement, there are these groups and individuals endorsing you. Would you just say, unequivocally, you condemn them and you don't want their support? Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. You wouldn't want me to condemn a group that I know nothing about. I'd have to look. If you would send me a list of the groups, I will do research on them. And certainly I would disavow if I thought there was something wrong. So, so that's Donald Trump disavowing uh but not really. David Duke used to be a grandmaster in the uh, Ku Klux Klan. Well, what's interesting is that just that was Sunday, the yeah. clip we had. Friday, he was asked about it, and he did disavow. Right. So, very peremptorily, it wasn't wholeheartedly. And again, so people understand, in United States politics, usually any mention of the Ku Klux Klan, racism, anti-Semitism, is you something... Out the race, right? Well, it's something that people deplore. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of research on that. And uh, the uh, question would later be clarified by the host to Donald Trump. There, I, he, let's take away groups from the question. Let's just yeah, say, yeah. what he about that? To, that's why you played the whole and, thing. And that's why, well, there was a little bit right after that, yeah. that, that yeah. where he clarified the question and narrowed it. Now, that clip will be used against mm -hmm. Donald Trump throughout the general yeah, election but, but, campaign. Sorry, can I just Super bring Tuesday in? night, Super Tuesday night, night, he repeated constantly, I, I have already done that, uh, yeah. this is over. So he tried to justify so, so, himself. So, so, he wasn't the defensive. So Zachary Williams, do you think he's talking out of both sides of his mouth here on race? I, I think so. I think he's avoiding trying to deal squarely with the question. And the GOP has already had a problem with regard to uh, recruiting African Americans or getting African Americans to, to turn out. Uh, to attend conventions to become delegates. And so uh, there's been associated with him a race problem. Uh, and so even conjuring the name of Strom Thurmond by Governor Kasich has been seen as problematic, and, mm. and most African Americans are very distrustful. So when Donald Trump even says that or even doesn't quite connect 
uh, squarely with the question, it seems to bring back into the memory what happened in 2008 with President Obama when he was then uh, Canada Obama, and he was made to disavow his longtime pastor, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, who had married he and his yes. wife, uh, First Lady, and, uh, and, and helped to raise their, uh, well, uh, raise their, their children in terms of, you know, spiritually. So he had to forthrightly, uh, you know, sort of uh, mm. forego allegiance. But Donald Trump uh, pretended as if the earpiece was the problem and then pretended he didn't quite really know what was going on. But he's also not being genuine because he's very much aware of the base that is supporting David Duke and the KKK. Well, and he wants that base and doesn't want to alienate the base. So he is playing out of both sides. Well, well, that's where I want to get to because as we go into the general election, let's say Donald Trump is the nominee and Hillary Clinton is the nominee on the Democratic side. Um, is Trump going to play to that to the base? Because in the old days, it used to be about getting swing independent voters. But it's really about getting out party supporters now. Are you, is this what, where Trump is going to go and Hillary will be more to the left? Let, uh, let me it, it take one be. at a it, time. It, sorry, uh, uh, Lynn, uh, sorry, Zachary, we'll go to Lynn first and then come to you. Okay, good. I'll be quick, Zachary. Uh, <laughs> once you are the presumptive nominee, you start a new chapter. And in a sense, you, you need to figure out the voters you need to win, a Republican base independent swing voters, crossover voters. So you move to the so, middle? So uh, you change your tune however you want to. Uh, the, the appeals that we will hear from now on may be a little different. The other thing is you're going to just get a lot of more outside groups taking swings that Trump didn't have that in the primary season. Zachary, quickly, and then I, I, I want to bring in, obviously, everyone on this. I think there's a disconnect. Uh, some call it an echo chamber in terms of the GOP not quite learning how to connect with African Americans, uh, invoking this history. I know when Rand Paul invoked it uh, early in the campaign, but not really substantive, substantively connecting with policies that uh, help to address longstanding African American uh, problems and issues that also connect universally with, uh, with the rest of the country. And so with Donald uh, Trump really uh, catering to uh, and pandering to this sort of mean-spiritedness, uh, it certainly doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't promote uh, understanding or hopefulness among African-American constituency. Yeah. And they're more familiar with, uh, uh, with uh, former Secretary of State and even the Democratic Party. And so the issue with, with Bernie Sanders is not necessarily that, uh, that they're against his policies, they're just not as familiar with him. But yeah. Donald Trump uh, is, is seen as anathema to uh, African-Americans and their, uh, their condition. Alberto, uh, for yeah. the Republicans to win the White House, they did a big post-mortem when Mitt Romney didn't get it. Mm -hmm. They need to win... Hispanics yes. and women, yes. uh, especially college-educated women, Yes, because uh, young people don't vote in the same way that they promised they're going to vote. Mm -hmm. um, what's Literally. Trump doing to this? I, I think uh, Trump would be, uh, it would be impossible for him to bring the, the nice percentage. This is not about winning the 100%. Everyone, yes, exactly. It's not about winning 70% as Obama did with the Hispanic vote. It is about staying in the 40, 42% as Reagan did, as Bush did, and that can deliver the White House in, in very uh, tight elections in a specific states. That can make the difference. Hispanics can make the difference. But saying, uh, um, uh, commenting on what uh, Sacre just said, this learning curve about the, about the Republicans uh, disregarding African Americans and Hispanics, uh, well, you know, uh, maybe um, the GOP uh, doesn't care enough for those uh, groups, uh, so that's the issue there. On the other hand, the Democratic Party has a history of frustrating those groups. So we are in a very, in a very shaky, shaky waters right now. May I make a point here of course. again? For we, this is a big, complicated system, but I'm going to put out there: you're talking about the Republican Party. Donald Trump isn't necessarily the Republican Party. He's asymmetrical, one yes. of a kind. Uh, Never seen be... this before. Yeah. So I wouldn't lay on the. I'm so glad you. I'm so glad you raised that. Whatever your criticisms may be of Trump. You are correct. For the first time in history of the. United yes, this States, is different for the first for time in the electoral uh, history of the United States, maybe, and for the first time in the GOP, maybe being conservative and being Republican can be two different things. Well, well, I, well I think also what Lynn's saying is that Donald Trump may appeal across party lines here well, a little well, bit. Well, we're not sure when we get into a general, but I think the historic nature of his candidacy is not to be discounted, and that is, he says he's a conservative. Uh, conservatives say he doesn't seem that consistent. We're, we're mm -hmm. not sure yet. Haven't heard a lot from him okay. because he's run a race very different than a traditional race. So he could pick off union workers in, in say, Ohio or uh, I'm not Illinois. Ready to say that. Or I mean, not but ready this to say is that. possible. There's a certain uh, no because it depends on other factors. When we have these state elections, 
You may care about a governor candidate or a senate candidate. When you go in to take a well, ballot, you may not want to cross over and move to a party you're usually not a part of. Okay, this is really We may say Donald Trump is, is not necessarily the Republican Party, but he's leading, and he's leading in all right. the states, and it's mm -hmm. believed he's going to take Ohio, which would then cancel out Governor Kasich, and also Florida, which would cancel out uh, Marco Rubio. So the question is, if he's not the GOP, what then is the GOP? But it doesn't matter. It's a moot point, that. because he's running as a Republican, just as Bernie <laughs> Sanders, you should know, wasn't a member of the Democratic Party before he ran. Okay, uh -huh. so, so given that Trump is, uh, there's a lot of worries about Trump, let's get back to, to the point. Is he going to be stopped, and how is he going to be stopped if that is the case? I can tell you how. I don't know if it will work. Tell me. You have uh, some very wealthy people who are uh, party activists who are putting together money to start paid advertising against him to bring up things in his business dealings and his positions uh, that may turn people off. You have just really two weeks to get this up and running. There were people who are running anti-Trump ads in Iowa, and as I say again, he didn't win in Iowa. Destroying okay. his prestige is going to be difficult, no, not with the sun. Yeah. Uh, what about the other two candidates, though? Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. Have they got a shot? That's, that's an interesting... Because uh, Rubio hasn't won a state. We are talking here another anomaly or another historical moment for the Republican Party that is living these dysfunctional times. All of a sudden, he, uh, they are able to bring to the table two Hispanic candidates. Yes, they are Hispanics. I don't care what the, the Democratic Hispanic activists say. Oh, they are not really Hispanic. Yes, they there are. There is a divide. No. Uh, and uh, the thing is that they are there... Um, they, uh, specifically Ted Cruz, who is uh, ahead of, 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 Rabbi, of Rubio, and that's a surprise, uh, he, he will have a, a lot of problems in a national campaign because his base is evangelical, is right. conservative, is white, is, is extremely niche. And uh, the, uh, the broader appeal he is lacking. Rubio will have more chances right now. The so-called mainstream candidate is not performing. Okay, and last word from Cleveland, Ohio. Zachary, uh, who do you think... Uh, will be President of the United States. Hillary Clinton, or are we going to see a Donald Trump, which would upset quite a few people around the world, I should imagine? I firmly believe Hillary Clinton will be the next President of the United States, without question. Okay, we're going to hold that to you. Thank you so much, Zachary Williams, there in Ohio. Thank you, both of you here in the studios as well. That's all we have time for. For more coverage on the U.S. presidential race, turn to our website, ctv-america.com. I'm Nathan King in Washington, D.C., and thanks so much for watching.